morning, Bucknutters, and welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, August 25th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm very happy to be joined by Patrick Murphy. Patrick, I want to tell the listeners about a new feature we started earlier this week we're very excited about. It's called Lunch Bucks. Each Monday after Urban Meyer's press conference, Patrick, Steve Hellwagon, and myself will go to a Columbus-area restaurant, and we will do a live video talking about what else? Ohio State football. So us sitting there eating food, talking about Ohio State football, um, we love it. We're very excited about it. The video will be live each week on Facebook. We will also post the video to our website after we are done, so you can see it on a couple different platforms. So, again, we're doing Lunch Bucks every Monday afternoon after Urban Meyer's press conference. And like I said, we're very excited about it. We went to Tommy's Pizza this week. We are already in the process of taking suggestions for next week. Patrick, I've already gotten a lot of requests uh, for places like Thurman's. I'm sure you're getting a lot of requests yourself. Just uh, talk about some of the requests you're getting for next week and just uh, Lunch Bucks itself. Yeah, I think it's a, a really cool idea we came up with. Um, you know, it'll get us out around town a little bit more, um, a way to kind of get into the community. You know, obviously, most people are working during that time, but if, you know, people are off on a Monday afternoon for some reason and, you know, are available to come meet us, it would be be nice to meet some people. Um, you know, and, it, and it's just to kind of get around and, and talk Buckeyes football. You know, we're going to be doing Facebook Live videos anyway, um, and instead of doing it at the Woody Hayes, why not, you know, move around a little bit, try out some different restaurants, and uh, kind of have fun with it. So we like the idea. It seemed to be well-received last week. Um, and they, like you said, yeah, some good suggestions already for, for food places. I've already got some that, uh, you know, I hadn't even thought about. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what we end up doing for Monday. But, uh, yeah, I hope people check it out. Our Facebook page, all you should do is go on there and search um, Ohio State, Ohio State Buckeyes on 247 Sports, and it'll come right up. So, uh, yeah, give us a like and check it out. Let us know what you think. Yeah, and like you said, we're going to go to a different place every week, so we're going to mix it up and keep it fun and, and take suggestions. And like you said, Patrick, meet fellow Buckeye fans out and about in Columbus. Right. And uh, so, again, just to be clear, we are going to do it in Columbus. If you have, like, a really nice, like, restaurant in, like, India that you know of or, like, Rome, we probably won't be making it. But, but if it's in Columbus – yeah, anywhere in Columbus, we're good. Um, maybe maybe Urban will take. Yeah, maybe Urban will take practice sometime. You know, international like Jim Harbaugh, and we can take suggestions then. We're all gonna be fighting over who gets to go to Rome to cover <laughs> it. Well, Alex is already there, so I guess Alex will just say, "I'll just stay here and cover it." Like I'll just stay yeah. in Rome. Um, yeah, that uh, that would be a cool assignment. Like, who gets to go to Rome for a week and cover football? I, I'm in. I want to do that. Yeah. I'm in. Um, <laughs> Uh, speaking of football, um, we are less than a week away from the opener. Feels great to say that at Indiana. And the Buckeyes okay. have still not named their starting right guard. Now, they know who it is. I mean, I, I think I know who it is. I think it's Brandon Bowen. I don't know for sure. They know for sure, but for some reason they have not let it out yet. Maybe they will later today. I don't know. But certainly by Monday, Urban will let us know. Um, what do you make of that? Do you think it's Bowen's job? And what do you make of them saying Malcolm Pridgen and Matt Burrell are still in the mix? Are you buying that? Just give us your thoughts on the right guard situation. It is tricky because... Like you said, we've heard we've heard that, that there is a starter, um, but you know if if they're waiting to name him to the public, I assume there's a reason for that. You know maybe it hasn't been entirely locked up yet. They're feeling pretty good about one guy, but they want to just be sure. I mean, obviously it's a pretty important position. Um, you know we saw last year it was a, a right tackle, but you know if one guy is is you know, struggling, the whole line seems to struggle. Um, you know, so th- I think it's it's imperative that they get this right, and it's not like they've got a couple of easy games to start the season, you know, like they like a Bowling Green like last year to kind of ease into it. You know, they go to Indiana, and if they mess that game up, you know, that sets you back for the whole season. Not only is it a loss, but it's a Big Ten loss. So, you know, one play um, that that goes wrong could could change the course of the season, especially. You know, I know we're going to talk about quarterbacks, but with, with Joe Burrow going down, you don't want something to happen to J.T. Barrett. So making sure this, this right guard spot is locked up with a guy who you trust to, to make the blocks and, and keep J.T. Barrett upright and, uh, you know, open holes for the running backs, that's important. And so take your time with it is, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, we all like to know. I'd love to see a test chart here um, soon, but, uh, you know, I'd rather them be, be safe with it and make sure they've got the right guy in there. There's been a lot of talk about Dwayne Haskins ever since he's been recruited. I mean, we've been talking about Dwayne Haskins, it seems like, for three years when he was being recruited. 
that when he was redshirting last year, there's still a lot of talk about him, and not really coming from the media, coming from his teammates. Like down in uh, the Fiesta Bowl, as we all know, his teammates were gushing about how good he looked throwing the football. Then in the spring we saw him, and he looked good. He still never played a down of football in a real game for the Buckeyes. I mean, this will be his first game um, on Thursday against Indiana. He'll be the backup quarterback with Joe Burrow out. And I know Tate Martell will be the number three, but they're only going to use him if they have to. I can't imagine they're going to burn the red shirt first game unless they absolutely have to. But I think Dwayne Haskins will play. Because I expect, I don't think it's going to be like a 50-point game or anything, but I think in the fourth quarter the Buckeyes are going to be in control. We're going to see number seven out there. Um, if Dwayne Haskins does have to play this year, both Indiana and maybe later in the season, what do you expect out of Dwayne Haskins this year, Patrick? I think early on you'll see some nerves, especially if he has to go in for – you know, a, a situation where it's not just re- in relief of J.T. Barrett. But, you know, this kid is talented. I mean, I remember the day he committed, the excitement around the program, um, talking to the guys who cover him and recruiting, the excitement they had about him. Uh, you know, he can play. And, you know, it's just a matter of going out there and, and showing the coaching staff, showing fans, things like that. Um, ideally, they'll get up big here in Bloomington, uh, allow him to get some snaps in the, you know, third, fourth quarter, whenever that may be. Um, you know, I, do, I, I assume it's against Oklahoma they probably will stick with JT, and then those next few games are, are the more traditional early non-conference games where you expect Dwayne to get in it and just get comfortable, get his feet wet. We saw it last year with Joe Burrow getting in, and obviously he was impressive. He has taken a similar route in terms of redshirting his first year. So, you know, I think I think these guys are comfortable from talking to people about Dwayne. He's he's much more comfortable with the playbook this year than he was a year ago, which, you know, that's the whole point of the redshirt year is, is get get ready. You know, he was talented enough to probably have, have not redshirted last year, but, you know, there was no reason. He took a year in the program, and now he's he's better off for it, we, we think. So, you know, I expect him to be all right, assuming he, he gets to go through the normal progression of, you know, coming in in relief duty, um, playing some snaps here and there, getting getting comfortable playing in front of, these big crowds, you know, Indiana will obviously be under the lights, so that'll be a nice situation for him to hopefully go in when, when things are already taken care of. Um, you know, I'm excited to see him in a game situation. He looked real good in the spring game last year, and I wrote about this last week. I think this kind of can potentially, and, you know, obviously you don't want an injury to anybody, but if there's a silver lining, it could potentially even things out between these two, get Dwayne, you know, in for a similar amount of reps that, that Joe had. So when you go into next season, um, you know, you've had a pretty even competition. No guy has has more reps. We've seen more guys than the other. You know, it'll be it'll be a flat you know competition between these two ideally, and and you know we'll get a true winner. Um, and you mentioned Tate. It'll be interesting to see if if they get you know in in one of these games later down this season before the conference games start, if they get up enough where they decide to to maybe get him a couple of reps. Um, you know, all we've seen in the spring game is him run really he took i think i think two attempts um but uh two two passing attempts but um you know whether they decide to burn his red shirt or not will be interesting because you know maybe get his feet a little wet but like you said i doubt i doubt that we'll see that buckeyes at hoosiers thursday 8 p.m espn will televise it college game day will be there um I just, I mean, it feels like a huge game since the season opener. It's a Big Ten game. I, I do think, I mean, it is Indiana, and they don't have Kevin Wilson anymore. So he did leave them a good roster, though. This is probably the best roster they've had in a while, especially on defense. Um, I'll give my prediction on next week's show. This is going to be the last time we have you on the show until the game, so I want to get your prediction on today's show, Patrick. How do you think this is going to play out and shoot me a final score? Sure. I, uh, I'm i excited for this one. Um, you know, obviously the start of college football um, – is always exciting to start Ohio State season. But the fact that, you know, they're going on the road, uh, Steve Hellwagon had something for us the other day, just the 11th time this program's gone on the road to start an opener in 127 years of the program, which is, which is crazy to think about. So, you know, I went to one a couple years ago at Virginia Tech. That was a lot of fun. This one looks to be, you know, in similar vein with how much hype they're giving it at Indiana. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, ESPN going to be there and, and doing all that. So should be fun. As In terms of on the field, I think it'll be a little bit closer than people, you know, in Scarlet and Gray would like in the opening half. I think Indiana, just the hype alone, is going to have these guys ready to play. Um, I think in the second half, Ohio State starts to pull away, starts to get comfortable, um, you know, separates quite a bit. And, uh, and I think I did 
52-35 is the final score in favor of the Buckeyes. I think they'll, they'll settle into the passing game, start getting the running game going, settle, settle into the passing game. You know, kind of a typical Ohio State game. Um, you know, Indiana, for, for what they do have returning, I just don't think they'll be able to hang on. I will be interested to see how uh, the secondary holds up. Indiana does have a returning quarterback, some good receivers. So, you know, that's a matchup with, with three new starters in the secondary that we'll be keeping a close eye on. But, uh, I think eventually we'll, we'll see the Buckeyes talent win out. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy. Thank you very much, Patrick. And don't forget out there, listeners, Lunch Bucks every Monday. And we're taking suggestions. So comment section on Bucknuts, YouTube, wherever you can get a hold of us. Give us uh, your suggestion of where we should go, Twitter, Facebook. Get a hold of us. There's many different ways to get a hold of us. We'd love for you just to get a hold of us on Bucknuts.com. But uh, get a hold of us however you can. Give us your suggestions on where to go each Monday for Lunch Bucks. And we hope you can join us uh, for one of the Mondays or every Monday somewhere in Columbus. Thanks again to Patrick Murphy, and thanks to all listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land.